Thank you, Frank. Now for some more news stories. The Borono State Governor, Professor Babaga Nazulum, has approved the dissolution of the State Executive Council for the first time since he assumed office in May 2019. The dissolution, which is coming weeks before primary elections of political parties, is aimed at allowing interested politicians to fly their party's flag in the 2023 general elections. In a statement by the governor's spokesperson, Ista Gusel, the dissolution letter was signed by the Permanent Secretary, Administration and General Services, Danjuma Ali, on behalf of the SSG. The statement added that the dissolution is with immediate effect. The members were therefore directed to hand over affairs to permanent secretaries in their ministries. President Muhammad Buhari has met with Ohanez Ndibu and other leaders of the Southeast on his visit to Ebony State. The meeting, which was held at the new ESCO Chambers Government House at Bakaliki, also had in attendance traditional rulers from the region. President General of Ohanezi, George Ubiozo, led other members of the Apex Sociocultural Group to the meeting. Governor David Umahi, who is also chairman of the Southeast Governors Forum, was also at the meeting. Ohanezi have tabled critical issues about the region to President Buhari. Top of the list is the demand for the immediate release of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, Namdi Kanu, from detention. President Buhari is in Ebony State on a two-day working visit where he is expected to commission projects and also meet with other interest groups. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo has arrived in Anambra State for a meeting with the All Progressives Congress stakeholders in the state. Oshimbajo, who arrived at the venue of the meeting in Oka at exactly 10.58 a.m., is currently having a closed-door session with members of the APC. All the APC stakeholders were on the ground to receive the vice president. The governor of the state, Professor Chukuma Soludu, was on the ground to receive the vice president at the Anambra International Cargo and Passenger Airport, Umwiri. And moving on to other stories, for the third time, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has sent a reminder to the 18 political parties expected to participate in the 2023 general election, saying they have till June 3 to conduct their primaries for all elections. In a statement by INEC's National Commissioner in Charge of Publicity and Chairman, Voter Education, Festus Okoye, the commission said, quote, it is imperative to remind political parties that they have one month from today to conclude their primaries. The deadline remains Friday, 3rd June 2022. While urging the parties to ensure rank of free and transparent exercise, the commission reiterated that the deadline is firm and fixed. End of quote. The commission explained that the nominations for presidential and national assembly elections would be submitted through the INEC web portal from June 10 to 17, 2022, while governorship and House of Assembly nominations would be submitted between July 1 and 15, 2022. INEC further reminded that they must submit to the Commission the list of candidates who must have emerged from valid primaries. The Independent National Electoral Commission says fresh registration in the ongoing nationwide continuous voter registration, CVR has hit 8.8 million as at May 2. The commission, in its weekly update released for quarter four, week three in Abuja, on Thursday said 5.4 million completed their registration. It noted that 2.3 million did online registration, while 3 million did physical registration. According to the update, those who completed their registration included 45,412 persons with disabilities and 3.7 million youths. The report also disclosed that at the time of update, INEC had received 15.7 million applications for voter transfer, requests for replacement of permanent voter cards, and changes to voter information records. And the federal government, through the Nigeria Railway Corporation on Thursday, announced it had reconnected the Abuja Kaduna train service line that was bombed by terrorists on March 28, 2022, in Kaduna. It made this public just as domestic airlines raised an alarm on Thursday over the hike in aviation fuel and its impact on airfares if not checked. 
A statement issued by the NRC and made available to our correspondent in Abuja stated that major track work on the rail line had been completed, adding that services would soon resume on the line. The NRC stated that local 2502, which was involved in the accident, do not damaged and trapped at the Regassa and due to lack of route access, had now crossed the Edu end and taken to the workshop for proper examination and routine maintenance. And the National Crime Agency, NCA, in the UK says it has recovered $23.4 million loot believed to have been siphoned out of Nigeria in the 1990s by the associates and family of former head of state General Sonny Abacha. According to a communique issued by the agency on Thursday, the funds formed part of a larger pool of monies identified by the United States Department of Justice as having been misappropriated by Abacha and his allies. The NCA revealed that the funds have now been transferred to the Home Office for onward transmission to the US DOJ. It also pursued nearly seven years of protracted litigation and international negotiation to obtain the recovery order to enforce the US forfeiture order relating to the recovered monies. As a denial, senior manager at the NCA, Billy Beatty, assured of the agency's fight against money laundering activities within the UK. And the Federal Operations Unit, Zone A of Nigeria's Customs Service, says it intercepted 7,259 bags of 50 kg of foreign powered rice, which is equivalent to 12 trucks in April. The service said 12 suspects had so far been arrested by the unit in connection with the seizure of different contrabands and others. Addressing journalists at the unit on Thursday, the customs area controller in charge of the unit, Hussein Ejebuno, said the unit discovered that the bags of rice were not fit for human consumption. He said, quote, a total of 12 suspects were arrested in connection with some of the seizures and for committing various customs offenses. Pursuant to the federal government's policy that encourages local production of rice against the importation of foreign parboiled rice. This unit had seized 7,259 of 50 kg bags of rice, an equivalent of over 12 truckloads. Sequel to a laboratory test analysis on some of the previously seized foreign parboiled rice by the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAC. One of the test parameters indicated some content of lead a soft, heavy, toxic, malleable, metallic element in the tested rice, making it unfit for human consumption. End of quote. Ejebunu warned Nigerians to be mindful of some imported foreign bags of rice, noting that they were not unhealthy for human consumption. And to other stories from the African scene, Somali lawmakers are expected to pick the country's new president on May 15. A parliamentary committee said on Thursday, the final step in a tortuous election process that has suffered delays due to a rift within the outgoing administration. The selection of a president is a key step in establishing a new government, which must be in place by May 17, if Somalia is to continue receiving budget support from the International Monetary Fund, on which it relies to pay essential bills. Driven by civil war since 1991, the Horn of Africa country has been struggling to rebuild its institutions in the face of a brutal insurgency by the Islamist group Al-Shabaab, which is linked to Al-Qaeda. And a new wave of the coronavirus driven by two new Omicron subvariants in South Africa has led to more than 50% increase in infections in 24 hours. According to official figures released on Thursday, the National Institute for Communicable Diseases counted 9,757 new cases of COVID-19 in the country, 50% more than the 6,170 new cases counted the day before on Wednesday. 64 new deaths were also reported. More than a quarter of the people tested had a positive result, the highest rate recorded in months. COVID-19 has also claimed seven lives in the last two days. The Center for Epidemic Response and Innovation won late April that South Africa, the country officially the most affected by COVID-19, 
on the continent has entered a new wave of the pandemic. And on the foreign scene, Taiwan's air force scrambled on Friday to warn away 18 Chinese aircraft that entered its air defense zone. Taiwan's defense ministry said part of what is a regular pattern of incursions that hasn't got the government in Taipei. Taiwan, claimed by China as its own territory, has complained of repeated such missions by Chinese aircraft, which have become a common occurrence over the past two years or so. Taiwan is currently in a heightened state of alert due to fears China could use Russia's invasion of Ukraine to make similar military move on the island, though Taipei's government has not reported any signs of Beijing about to be attacked. The number of aircraft involved was well of the last large-scale incursion, 39 Chinese aircraft on January 23, and since then, such flybys have been with far fewer aircrafts. And the United States President Joe Biden on Thursday named Karen Jean Pierre as the next White House press secretary, the first black person to hold the high profile post. Biden in a statement praised Jean Pierre's experience, talent, and integrity, saying he was proud to announce her appointment. Make people proud. Um, as Jen said, uh, at the top, uh, this is a historic moment, and it's not lost on me. I understand how important it is for so many people out there, um, so many different communities that I um, stand on their shoulders, and I have been throughout my career. And so it is an honor and a privilege to be behind this podium in about a week or so when Jen is ready. Um, and that uh, that is something that I will honor uh, and um, and do my best to uh, represent uh, this president and this first lady the best that I can, but also the American people. And so it is, uh, you know, it's a very emotional day. That's probably the best way that I can explain that. A very emotional day. Um, and uh, I just appreciate this time and this moment. And uh, I hope that I... And the Kremlin has said on Friday it did not know whether there would be a parade in Mariupol on May 9 to commemorate the Soviet Union's victory in World War II, but that the time for celebrating Victory Day would come. Russian forces say they have captured Mariupol despite ongoing resistance from Ukrainian forces in the Donbass region city Azovstal still plant. Up next is entertainment news. Hello and welcome to Entertainment Business. I am Chioma Amari Bulam. Jim Ike's production company, Sixth Sense, has acquired Sin, a series concept by Suturiteria Projects and Ziva Works. Confirming the acquisition, the series co writer Emil B. Garuba wrote on Instagram, and I quote Sin, a series concept at Suturiteria.ng, created in collaboration with Art Ziva Works Limited was recently acquired by Jim Ike's at Sixth Sense Movies and has been developed into a series. It's just one of the many projects we've come up with over the years and believe me, there's much more in the pipeline. News of the series acquisition comes amid reports that the movie star's production company is working on a sequel for his 2021 thriller, Bad Comments. The sequel titled The Crusader is set to begin filming in July with collaborations from film and tourism boards in Dubai, Dar es Salaam and Lagos. And away from that now, iHeartMedia brought in $69 million in podcast revenue during the first quarter while total revenue reached roughly $843.5 million, surpassing Wall Street's expectations. The company's digital audio group, which includes podcasts, accounted for roughly 25% of iHeart's total revenue for the quarter, though broadcast um, radio remained one of the strongest drivers of revenue, bringing in a total of $416.5 million during the quarter. Still, iHeart swung to a $48.7 million net loss for the quarter. The company has continued to expand its presence in the podcast space and in February led a Series A investment round 
in the podcast platform Sounder. The investments came roughly a year after iHeart acquired Triton Digital, an audio and ad tech firm, for $230 million. I am Chioma Amaribulam. Well, thank you, Mbalalia. This is uh, a wrap and some package that we have for you in business now at this hour. Thank you for watching. I am Frank Omalape. Bye-bye for now.